Similar to a bicycle, Supercross bikes transfer power to the rear wheel through a combination of sprockets and a chain. Although it appears to be simple, there's a lot of engineering that goes into these sprockets to help achieve optimum performance. The drive chain would be the countershaft sprocket that comes out from the output shaft of the transmission. Connecting that is the actual drive chain, and then you have the rear sprocket. The sprocket puts the power from the engine to the rear wheel to the ground. Riders will change a rear sprocket to change their gearing. You can move the power or move the ratio of your gearing just by changing the sprocket. For the Supercross guys that you see racing every Saturday night, they're most likely gonna have a larger sprocket than what you would see on your bike at home because they want to accelerate hard out of the corners to jump big jumps and rhythm sections. A big sprocket in the rear, that'll increase torque and increase pickup so you can get up to speed much faster. If you go down on the rear, each gear revs longer before hitting the rev limiter and you can reach higher speeds. The holes that you see here are what we call lightning holes, and that's to make the sprocket as light as possible to reduce unsprung weight and increase horsepower. The teeth all have mud grooves on each tooth to reduce dirt buildup, so the chain is seating into the sprocket and you're not having any derailments. The sprocket is hard anodized to reduce chain wear over time to get the maximum life that you can out of the material. We actually don't go through a lot of different sizing. They don't want to shift that much. That's why a lot of riders, if you look at their data, they ride in first a lot. We don't ever really mess with the gearing much. The power delivery of the motorcycle and the way we set up the chassis likes a certain sprocket range, I guess you could say. Like Adam in particular, he, he runs a 51 tooth rear sprocket. That's usually what he runs at all the rounds. It's very rare that we would have to change the sprocket for something that we couldn't adjust with the mapping or some other type of power delivery. So usually once he gets locked in on a, a gearing setup that he likes and the chassis setup that he likes, we try to stick with that.